They did not sing or tell stories that day, even though the weather improved, nor the next day, nor the day after. They had begun to feel that danger was not far away on either side. One morning, fording a river at a wide, shallow place, they saw that the great mountains had marched down very near to them. Is that the mountain? asked Bilbo in a solemn voice. Of course not, said Balin. That is only the beginning of the Misty Mountains, and we have got to get through or over or under those somehow before we can come into the Wilderland beyond. And it is a deal of a way even from there to the Lonely Mountain. Now Gandalf led the way. They asked him where he was making for. You are come to the very edge of the wild. Hidden somewhere ahead of us is the fair valley of Rivendell, where Elrond lives in the last homely house. I sent a message by my friends, and we are expected. That sounded nice and comforting. But they had not got there yet, and it was not as easy as it sounds to find the last homely house west of the mountains. After what seemed ages, they came to the edge of a steep fall in the ground so suddenly that Gandalf's horse nearly slipped down the slope. Here it is at last, he called. Bilbo never forgot the way they slithered and slipped in the dusk down the steep zigzag path into the secret valley of Rivendell. Their spirits rose as they went down and down. The trees changed to beech and oak, and there was a comfortable feeling in the twilight. Mmm, it smells like elves, thought Bilbo, and he looked up at the stars. They were burning bright and blue. Just then, there came a burst of song like laughter in the trees. Oh, what are you doing? Oh, where are you going? Your ponies need chewing. The river is flowing, oh tra la 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 here down in the valley. Oh, where are you going, with beards all the wagging? No knowing, no knowing, what brings Mr. Baggins and Balin and Dwayling down into the valley in June? Ha ha! Oh, will you be staying, or will you be flying? Your ponies are straying, the daylight is dying. To fly would be folly, to stay would be jolly, and listen and hark till the end of the dark to our tune. Ha ha. They were elves, of course. Soon Bilbo caught glimpses of them as the darkness deepened. He loved elves, though he seldom met them, but he was a little frightened of them too. Dwarves don't get on well with them. At last, one, a tall young fellow, came out from the trees and bowed to Gandalf and to Thorin. Welcome to the valley, he said. Thank you, said Thorin, a bit gruffly. But Gandalf was already off his horse and among the elves, talking merrily with them. Supper is preparing over there, he said. Tired as he was, Bilbo would have liked to stay a while. Elvish singing is not a thing to miss in June under the stars. But the dwarves were all for supper as soon as possible and would not stay. They all came to the last homely house and found its doors flung wide. The master of the house was Elrond, as noble and as fair in face as an elf lord, as strong as a warrior, as wise as a wizard, as venerable as a king of dwarves and as kind as summer. Evil things did not come into the valley. All of them, even the ponies, grew refreshed and strong in a few days there. So the time came to Midsummer Eve, and they were to go on again with the early sun on Midsummer morning.